Hey everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're gonna to show you how to use this valve spring compressor tool so you can disassemble your cylinder head as part of the engine rebuild process on your vintage Honda. So stay tuned. This is a valve spring compressor tool and it is a must have tool if you're gonna be doing engine rebuilds. In particular, what this does is it helps you rebuild the cylinder head so you can actually compress and remove the valve springs and the valves so you can inspect the valves themselves, the valve seats and the valve guides. Now this is the proper tool for the job to do the job correctly and safely. And granted, this tool will fit a wide variety of cylinder heads regardless of make or model. So one tool covers a lot of bases, Definitely a toolbox staple for you engine rebuilders out there. What we're working on right now is a CB350 Honda cylinder head. I've already removed the three of the four valves and valve springs, and we have this last one here. This is the actual valve spring and all the different pieces associated with that. We'll show you them when we actually take them apart. And so I flip the head up. We look at the combustion chamber here. Here is our remaining valve. So we have to take the spring off so we can take the valve out of the head. I do want to emphasize one thing before we start with all this. We're dealing with springs that are under uh, a lot of spring tension and it is a potential safety thing. So make sure you're wearing safety glasses or some kind of eye protection uh, when you're doing this because pieces could fling out and you know, take an eye out. So remember, uh, be safe about it. Wear some safety glasses or eye protection. Put this together. So I have the cylinder head here and I'm using these kind of cylinder head stands because we do a lot of work here at the shop. I realize not a lot of you all have uh, these, so you could use some, some two by fours or blocks of wood um, to raise the head up. And the reason that's important is because I want to be able to access the, the valve and the spring from both the bottom here and the top because we have to squeeze this spring down. That's how the tool works. So you have to have it raised enough to, to get underneath it. On the valve spring compressor, we have a couple of different sizes of these uh, um, adapters to go on top of the valve retainer. This is this round piece on the very top of the valve spring here. I'm going to go with the largest one. That's the size I want right there. Uh, make sure you, you test fit and find the one that's the, the best size fit. So that's going to be our, our one we're going to go with. Let's get the tool set up. So it's kind of like a big C clamp basically in the tool and there's threads on both ends of it. I have, I'm going to use these two pieces right here. These threaded, uh, parts here. One of them has a hole in it for a crossbar. And let me just go ahead and start, just start putting it together. That's just probably the easiest way to see it. Throw that into the bottom there. We'll take that one, throw it in the top here. If you want, you can put a little bit of oil on these threads and make it run a bit smoother. All right. And then our tanner piece is gonna go on there. All right, to the head here. I'm gonna line up the valve spring compressor where this, this bottom part of the uh, tool here is gonna go in the center of the valve and that's gonna go on top of the retainer. Feeling center of the valve. You'll kind of know it because that should line up on the center of the retainer there. And I'm just gonna go real lightly till I get some spring pressure, just like that. All right, let's start compressing this spring here. What we're pushing down on is the retainer. Okay, I'm gonna use a magnet here. One and two. Now I'll release the pressure off the valve spring, keeping everything very stable, I'm doing it nice and slow. All right, that's it. Let's take off the parts here. I want to point out a note here. Uh, now, this particular valve is coming out very easily. 
I can slide it out without too much trouble. Uh, however, you may not find it that easy on your head. And the reason is uh, a couple factors could influence how tight this valve is in the guide here, how easy it is to come out. Oftentimes you'll see it go about, oh, yay far and stop and feel like it's stuck and it doesn't want to turn or move. Now the stem could be bent, possibly, not likely. What usually happens here on the top of the valve, this very tip of the valve, is that uh, the, the camshaft rocker arm is hitting on this thing like a hammer and it causes the metal here to kind of like mushroom out a little bit. And so you get a high spot along the edge here of the valve stem. And the way to deal, deal with that is to take a file and real lightly just kind of work your way around it and file that edge just enough so it comes out of the guide nice and clean like that. If you're forcing it out of the guide, you need to keep kind of sanding on it or filing on it real gently so it comes out so you can take that high spot off the valve. We now have all of the valves and the related pieces out of the cylinder head and I've taken just one valve and its parts and laid it out here in front of us in the order in which you would go back together in the cylinder head. Uh, first and foremost, we actually have the valve itself. In this case, it happens to be an intake valve. The next thing I have here is a valve stem seal. Now, depending on your engine, you may or may not have this. In our case of the CV350 engine, there is no valve stem seal. I'm gonna repeat that again. There is no valve stem seals on the CV350 twin cylinder engine, but engines like the 360, 750, et cetera, will use these and this will have to go on next. Uh, the next piece is going to be the smaller spring, which is called the inner spring. And then next to it is the larger outer spring. And the two springs go inside each other. If you look real closely at each of the springs, there's on one end, there are a couple windings that are close together. This is a progressive wound spring, meaning those uh, have a different spring rate to them. The tight wound coils can be facing uh, downward when you put them back on the head. The next piece in the assembly is called the retainer. And this is what actually kind of holds everything together from the top side. The next piece we have are what are known as valve locks or sometimes called valve keepers. There are these little split metal pieces and they have a taper to them. And they also have a little raised groove in the middle which engages into the stem of the valve. The last piece we have is actually still on the cylinder head. This piece right here, this round piece, is actually a spring seat. It's a piece of hardened steel, and it does come off of the valve guide if you need it to, but most of the time it's stuck in place and doesn't want to move. And this is where the, the spring uh, sits. The larger diameter is for the outer spring, and the smaller raised one is for the inner spring. Upon reassembly, I'm gonna go ahead and oil up the valve stem. Make sure you oil it up before you put it in. Valve's in. If you had a valve stem seal, now would be the time to put the valve stem seal on. Oil it up and slide it over. Of course, the spike doesn't have one. The inner spring, tight windings down. Outer spring, tight windings down. The retainer will compress the valve and put the locks on. All right, let's get our valve spring compressor in place. I'm gonna push up on the valve to make sure it's on the seat. Get the bottom part of the compressor in the center of the valve. And then I can actually go in here and start to tighten up this. I'm just gonna get real gentle by hand. Put some pressure on it. Put my pin in. Actually go in, squeeze it on down. All right, that should be good. I don't have to squeeze the spring down all the way, just most of the way. I'm gonna take a little bit of engine grease and I'm gonna put some right in the middle of the valve locks, a big old blob right there, and that's so they stay in place when I go to put them on the valve stem. A blob of grease right there. I have a little magnet, which is really a handy tool to do this with, but you can do it with a pair of needle nose pliers. And I'm gonna come in the valve and get that in place on the valve stem. It's really important that we make sure that it is totally centered on the stem correctly. And it's in the groove. Otherwise, when you take the pressure off of it, they could shoot out. So see how they both are looking clean and kind of centered on the valve. That means they're in place. If they're crooked or cocked, they're not going to be locked in properly. And then when you let the tension off the spring, they could 
shoot out or you're not seated properly. So final test is we'll actually release the spring and we'll see how they, they seat. If they're square and even in there, and if they're the same height, that means this is properly installed. If they look like they're crooked, they probably are. So recompress uh, the spring and readjust until you get them in the right spot. This valve, valve spring and lock assembly is now assembled on the cylinder head. I'm gonna repeat the process three more times for the remaining valves and springs. Same exact order, same exact everything. Just taking my time. A couple of things I do wanna emphasize in doing all this, again, Wear safety glasses when you're doing this operation because we're dealing with springs under pressure and little pieces can fling out, etc. Two, it is very important to make sure those valve locks are properly seated in place before you release the valve spring compressor. If it doesn't look right, compress it again, and make sure they're lined up. On a final note, tools like this valve spring compressor up until the recent past were almost impossible to find. They were super difficult to, to obtain. You couldn't get them, you couldn't take your stuff apart. So now we're very fortunate to be able to have access to these tools at a reasonable price that we can now do this work at home with. And that's one of the reasons why we carry this on the website. Uh, it will work with pretty much any like, small engine cylinder head that uses a coiled valve spring, which is almost every single one of them because it comes in multiple sizes. I do wanna make one note that if you are working on a CB450 or a CB500, T dual overhead cam engine. It does not use a coil valve spring. It uses what's known as a torsion bar valve spring. Whole different design, whole different engineering. It's really cool. Do a little bit of research, look it up. You'll understand what I'm talking about there, but it would never use a tool like this. Some really interesting engineering from Honda in the 1960s there. So with that, I'm gonna get the rest of this put together so I can get on the bike and get the bike back on the road, etc. just like you guys are doing. And we're gonna end it right there. This is Brendan here with Common Motor common-motor.com on the internet. And thank you all for watching. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our newsletter via our website. And of course, subscribe right down below on this YouTube channel. And we will see you next time.